The average price of a new car is about $45,000, but Honda is here to give us some relief. Their cars are actually getting cheaper, so let's get into it. <laughs> We're getting relief finally from the chip supply issues, and here's Honda bringing in their base LX trims across their, well, I wouldn't say across their lineup, but across some of their best sellers. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about industry auto news, and make sure to smash the like button, as well as make sure you're subscribed. I have a couple drives coming up. I'll be driving the all-new Ionic 6 electric sedan, the Streamliner, in just a couple weeks, and then I'll also be driving the Corolla Cross Hybrid, as well as the Prius Prime at the end of this month. So stay tuned for that. And let's get into the great news here. Honda Pilot base price drops under $40,000. They're reintroducing an LX trim. So if we go over to the Honda Builder, we don't see this actually taking place yet because the starting MSRP is $39,190. And we don't have that base LX trim here. We just have uh, the Sport as the base on the Builder. Unfortunately, I haven't driven the new Pilot yet. I would love to test it out, throw my kids in there and see how viable it is in the very competitive three row crossover market. But from what I heard, it drives really, really well, which doesn't surprise me because their newest Civic HRV CRV drive really, really well for their segments. And so this new LX will start at 37,295. And what we just saw with the sport trim starts at around 40,000. Remember what we see on the builder page doesn't include a uh, destination. If you need all wheel drive, of course, that will be an option. I'm assuming on the base LX trim, it'll cost you two grand. Looking at destination, it's 1,345 bucks that you would add on. Adding that to the base price, so out the door, no options, complete base model, front wheel drive, 38,640 for the new pilot. And the good news coming from car and driver is that they are expecting this LX base trim to reach dealerships soon. So what does the base LX get you? Car and Driver does confirm that you will be able to option it with all-wheel drive. Standard, of course, is the 10-speed in-house built automatic transmission, as well as the all-new 3.5 liter V6 with 285 horse. Also, the base screen here is a tiny 7-inch touchscreen, and it doesn't have some of the driver assistant features that we see on the Pilot Sport. It has dual zone climate control rather than tri-zone. Of course, it has cloth that has manual front seats and only comes in silver, black, or white. Ooh, I, I don't know which color I'd get. I would either probably get silver or white. <laughs> Let me know what color of the three you would get. Car and driver is expecting it to look a lot like the EXL trim, which is this guy right here. So it, it, it looks great. I have no issues with the redesigned Pilot and even on the base LX, it should look pretty strong as well. Obviously we wouldn't get this dark gray color. But this is riding on the coattails from just a few weeks ago. Uh, moving to Kelly Blue Book right now. Honda brings back inexpensive CRV base trim. And just like the pilot, if I try to find this base LX trim for the CRV, it doesn't exist. Honda launched the CRV with just four trims EX, EXL, Sport, and Sport Touring. The Sport and Sport Touring have the hybrid models, which, I mean, in my opinion, I wouldn't be going for the base LX trim, but it's a great basic transportation solution for many people, especially those who don't care about acceleration. They just care about A to B. Uh, practicality and this base LX will do that. And here's a Honda spokesperson saying the CRV LX is coming back due to unprecedented demand. And the CRV LX will cost 28,410 plus the 12.95 destination fee. That gets us to under $30,000, so 29,705, which when we go back to the builder here, it's going to be well over 30, it's probably closer to 33,000 for this EX, so we're saving 3300 bucks here roughly from the LX to the EX. The LX will lose the sunroof, lose a power adjustable driver seat and get just a single climate control zone. It rides on 17 inch steel wheels with hubcaps instead of the EX's 18 inch wheels and loses a blind spot warning, warning system and heated front seats. I love this. I love that Honda is reintroducing base cars. Cars have become so bloated with things that we rarely use. Now, blind spot monitor, I think, is one of those things is super duper helpful on large vehicles especially but the crv has huge windows and the visibility is quite strong and i still don't have blind spot monitors in any of my own personal cars and you just live with it i'm glad honda's really doing this because things are getting more expensive for the consumer out there not just in the car market but in their daily lives now 
last vehicle, the Civic LX also for 2023 is getting a base LX model, just like the Pilot, just like the CRV. And it will feature manual seat adjustment, manual climate control, no split folding rear seats. So it's just one, I would assume just one big folding rear seat. So at first glance, this was a shot to my heart because they take the leather off the steering wheel and let's it like if you get into a base Honda Ridgeline, like the plastic steering wheel makes me want to throw up. It's so terrible. But they're saying they're replacing the leather with vinyl upholstery. So you're still going to have a nice soft um place for your hands on the steering wheel. It's not leather. And that doesn't bother me. Even on the new uh, Lexus RZ fully electric vehicle, there's no leather in there. And that steering wheel felt amazing. So I have high hopes for this uh, plastic, aka vinyl upholstered steering wheel and not just the base plastic with no upholstery, if that makes sense. We'll also get steel wheels with hubcaps to replace the base alloys from 2022. So how much will the new Civic LX cost? It'll cost under 25 grand. It's about 1500 bucks less than the next highest sport trim at 24,545. Going to the Civic here, obviously the sport and EX and touring on the sedan is here that obviously there's also the SI, but that's a different car altogether. Of course, the this base LX trim will still get the CVT with 158 horsepower, two liter. Of course, destination will push this price closer to about $26,000. Now, even though you don't get blind spot monitor on these base trims, you still get forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking, pedestrian detection, and you also have a radar cruise control lane departure warning and of course the standard rear view camera, which is mandated by the government. I love this news for the Civic entering in a different price category here because uh, the new Corolla, you can get the Corolla hybrid that starts at like 22.8, somewhere around there. And it still comes in cheaper than this LX Civic. Now the LX Civic, about two grand more uh, than the LE Corolla Hybrid. They're going to be similar in acceleration, I would say, but handling is way better on the Civics, but you're not going to get 50 miles per gallon like you do on the Corolla Hybrid. So I still recommend the LE or SE Hybrid over the Civic LX, but it's great to have the competition returning on the Honda side here on the I guess the entry level sedans. I'll see you guys down below on what you have to say about Honda's new base prices. I don't think the Civic benefits that much, to be honest, but I definitely believe uh, the Pilot and the CRV are going to see the biggest benefit with those entry level options. Now, over on IC Cars, 10 new cars priced highest over MSRP. This is a fun little study that they did here. So we're going to look at new car prices. Um, are they going down? Are they going up? What's the news here? Well, the good news is new car prices are going down. However, they are still, the average car is still priced about four grand, three to four grand over MSRP. So we still have a roughly a 9% sales price over the MSRP in the industry, which is pretty disgusting. We also have this graph saying that dealer markups are going down, but we also have the average MSRP prices still rising here in early 2023. I guess maybe Honda's base prices might actually affect this little blue blue bar here. And then the red line is what, what hurts us the most because it's the dealer markup mixed with the MSRP. Okay, here are the most expensive cars over MSRP. Most of them are luxury. The remaining ones in the top 10 are Jeeps, which they have their own a unique culture around that drives the demand. Uh, the Genesis GV70 is the most marked up new car over MSRP in the country, over 27%. GLB is up there. Tycon's up there. Tycon, if you look at it, it's about 22, 22 to $23,000 over MSRP, but not as high as a, as a direct percentage here. CT4V is in here, GV80, Porsche Macan, Cadillac CT5, and the Lexus RX 350H rounds out the top 10 here, most overpriced vehicles over MSRP, still over 20%. The national average, like we mentioned earlier, is about eight and a half per, eight and a half to nine percent. Now the RX 350H is the best of the available hybrids currently for the RX or even all the all the engine options. It's better than the 2.4 turbo. It's better than the 2.4 turbo hybrid, the 500, the 500H, and it gets about 40 miles per gallon. So the 350H is the best RX in America because we don't have the 450H plus yet. But if the 350H is 20% over market, 
then I would assume the plug-in hybrid, when it becomes available, is probably going to be 25 to 30 minimum percent and would probably beat out the GV70, as disgusting as that may sound. Okay, here are the most normally priced cars on the market. The Silverado is actually down 2%, and that's why Chevy's shut down production on Silverados because they don't want to have to discount their cars essentially to move metal. Uh, it's disgusting. That's the way it is. It, we're never going to see a market, I don't think, as fortuitous as, let's say, 2019 before the pandemic. But that's just the nature of the beast, at least for the foreseeable future. Volkswagen Arteon, I mean, sedans aren't doing great. And I don't, I don't, I see Arteons on the road occasionally. And I always have to triple look. I'm like, wait, what the heck is that? Because they just don't sell that many of them. Anyways, I kind of like Lyric. Uh, the interesting thing with the Lyric is that it was priced a certain way out of the gate because it had to qualify for the EV tax credit due to some weird things not making it qualify. So that's going to normalize, meaning it probably will be well over the 8.8% or close to it here in the coming months and probably the rest of the year. That's just my feeling. Anyways, QX80, 0%. I just reviewed the Armada. Just get the Armada. It's cheaper and it's the same vehicle. Anyways, that's why there's not they're not able to move that vehicle. Also, Sierra is in here because it's the same thing as a Silverado. Chevy Malibu, who wants a Chevy Malibu? Uh, I don't know. If you guys know someone who bought a new Malibu, let me know why they bought it. Ford F-150 Hybrid is expensive as heck, and that's why it is about at MSRP selling. Chevy Traverse, the demand must not be very high on that. They're not marking it up very much. Same thing with the Envision and the Mazda CX-9 as they get close to canceling it, and the CX-9 sales are super high right now. So Mazda is keeping the prices close to MSRP on the CX-9, one of the best deals on the three-row crossover market before it's replaced by the CX-90. And you can see here, so if we look at which categories are doing better or worse with markups this year, uh, we want to look at this category right here. Hatchbacks are up 3.2% compared to last year. Sedans are about neutral. Minivans are about neutral. Wagons, SUVs, coupes, trucks, convertibles are all down versus year-over-year -year prices over MSRP. And if you look at the national average compared to last year, it's down about 1.1%, but we're still over 9% over MSRP in early 2023 here. I mean, it looks like things are trending towards getting more affordable. The dealer is not being so greedy. Well, I don't know if that's the case. They just have more incentive to move cars because the demand is cooling with the high interest rates and everything getting more expensive due to inflation. We are definitely getting into uncertain times, but uh, at the same time, cars will start cooling off with their prices. And then I, I think Honda is setting a trend here is that base cars are going to be coming more available to the market, stripped it out, take out all the fancy electronics, give people just the bare necessities because that's what people are going to be able to afford. And it's going to be attractive, more attractive to those who may be struggling. But I'm going to there. Thank you guys for watching. Good times that Honda is making things cheaper and the market is starting to correct itself, but it's way too slow for my liking. Definitely stay tuned because I'll update you guys on where the market's headed, etc. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. If you made it this far, hit the like button. If you haven't, I would appreciate that. It helps me out a lot. Catch you in the next one.